Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and uh, first, before I say anything else, I'd like to say uh, my part and you know hope that uh, all of you guys are out there are safe and staying at home, practicing social distancing, sneezing in your shirt or your armpit or wherever else you want to sneeze. Just don't sneeze on people. <laughs> uh, stay inside. Only go out for you know, essentials, even if you have to go out at all, try to get groceries delivered if you can. Just stay out of public so that we can get through this uh, disaster as quickly as possible, even though the world will probably never be the same. I think that, uh, you know, we can save a lot of lives if we just stay home and, and, you know, code, write programs, make games, that kind of thing. Let's do that. We're introverts anyways by nature, right? So uh, you guys as well as me, you should be happy that you're not going anywhere. I'm happy. So let's let's talk about what we're gonna do now. We got this uh, we got this new project called Minesweeper. If no one knows, or if none of you know what Minesweeper is, it's it's a game that came out way way back, and uh, it was actually one of my favorite games back on Windows 3.1 when uh, I first discovered it. I recently rediscovered it while I was working on refurbishing some old IBM PS2 Model 90s, and uh, I came across it while I was reinstalling Windows. And uh, you know, of course, Windows comes with two games called one called Solitaire and the other called Minesweeper. So I started playing, and I was like, "Wow, this game is so addicting! I can't believe that I totally forgot about this game, and I haven't uh, decided to remake it sooner." So, with that said, uh, I'd like to go ahead and work on actually, you know, remaking this game with you guys. And um, we're going to do it using Unity, even though Unity is probably a little overkill for this. I think that uh, with the multi-platform or cross-platform capabilities of Unity, it would make it easy for someone to build this game and then distribute it on every platform known to man. So, with that said, uh, I'd like to just kind of go over what Minesweeper is. So I downloaded this off the Mac App Store, which closely resembles the uh, Microsoft version that came out on Windows 3.1 forever ago, which is kind of cool because this is what I grew up with. Uh, one of the things is that uh, the 9x9 grid for the beginner level with the 10 mines, which is completely unofficial, by the way, because uh, with the official tile or grids, I think we're 8x8. So know that. Uh, Minesweeper fact there for you. Um, so we've got this grid, we've got tiles, and um, all of these are covering tiles. So they're basically, behind them we have either like a clue tile that tells us how many mines are around the tile that we clicked on, or we have a blank tile that is kind of like a safe tile that doesn't do us any good, except for it uncovers more tiles. So, and then the other tiles are the mines, of course, that we want to stay away from, we don't want to hit any of those. So if we click somewhere here, we'll notice that... Uh, you know, a whole bunch of uh, tiles just got uncovered. And that's because the way that this game works is that the blank tiles uh, will uncover all the adjacent blank tiles and clue tiles, okay? And we're gonna go over that more later. But for now, just know that this is kind of what happens. So now we've got all these clues. And the way Minesweeper works is that it tells you with the clue tile, like this one here, for instance, says, hey, uh, there are exactly one mines adjacent to me. So here, 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 here. Those are the positions, right, that a, a uh, mine could be. So since we can see that the in, all of the tiles have been uncovered around this one, the only tile that could potentially be a mine is this one. So this game actually gives us a good way to mark tiles, and that is by right-clicking. So we right-click, and now we've got like a little reminder set that, hey, you know what, there's a mine here. So what we want to do is I'm going to show you what happens if you click on a mine. You lose. Okay, that's it. That's the end of the game. It uncovers all the mines. It shows you where they all are, and that's game over. So your objective is is to basically clear all the blocks without hitting any of the mines by using the clues that kind of give you a hint as to how many tiles are or how many mines are around that particular tile. So yeah, this game gets pretty addicting pretty fast. So. The way we um, go about this, then, is uh, first think about it this way. We've got a 9x9 grid. So if any of you guys know have ever watched any of my other tutorials, you'll know that I like to work with uh, arrays when it comes to storing certain information in a, in a grid. 
So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a multi-dimensional uh, array of game objects. And those game objects are going to be the tiles. We're going to create some prefabs and uh, we'll instantiate those in code. And then we're going to build our grid that way. The first thing we want to do though is we're going to probably want to build a, a random mine generator of sorts, right? We're going to need to generate 10 mines at the very beginning of the game when the game starts. And we have to make sure that uh, we pick a random location, of course, out of our 9x9 grid. And out of that location, we need to make sure that when we place a mine, that we also check before we place it to see if we've already placed a mine there. So very simple. And this is going to be basically the first part of the tutorial, is uh, building that random mine generator. And uh, then next week we'll go over something else. But let's go ahead and kind of get started with that. So as always, uh, in Unity, you'll want to create a new project. I've called mine Minesweeper Part 1. And uh, from here, we're not going to do pretty much anything or much work in the UI whatsoever. Uh, right now, we're just going to create a folder and call it scripts. Right. And in our scripts folder, we're going to create a C sharp script. And we're going to call this one game. All right, and let's go ahead and double click on that so that we can open up uh, Visual Studio. There we go. Okay. So remember, the first thing I said is that I want to build a multi-dimensional array that is going to store basically our, our grid our grid, our tiles, sorry, for our grid. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, an array of game objects. Now the way you do that is you basically say, all right, we're going to create game object. All right, actually, you know what? Let's make this public. It doesn't need to be, but uh, it allows us to see it in the inspector. And here is Visual Studio when I need to do updates. I'm going to not do that. All right. And we're just going to call this, uh, let's call it the grid. And we're going to go ahead and tell it that it's going to be a new game object array. And we're going to give it a size of 9 by 9. Okay. That's going to be the size of our grid for to store our tiles in. So now what I want to do is I want to create a new method and we'll call this one. So we're going to call this one place mines. Okay. And in this, what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the unity engines random class to generate a range between zero and nine. Okay. To give us a location for our um, mines. For the, uh, for the X and for the Y, so for the row and the column. So the way that looks is it's going to be int X equals Unity Engine. And we're just going to call the entire namespace just so that we don't get any ambiguity errors. Random.range 0, 9. Okay, and, and, and then look at this method, okay, just so that you guys understand. 0. If you look at the, uh, the description of that uh, method, you'll see that the, it'll return a random float. Actually, yeah. So this one will return, if we return an integer, if we store it as an integer, it'll return a random integer number between min, which is inclusive, so zero, and max, which is exclusive, okay? So what we have to do is nine, okay? because our, our numbers are actually going to be 0 through 8. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which actually makes up 9 numbers. And that's a little confusing and not very easy to wrap your head around. But we have to make sure that uh, we play by the rules of the method 0 through 9. Okay, So that'll give us 
two random numbers. They can be anything from 0 to 8, x and y, right? So the next thing we need to do is we need to check if the grid array at location x, y equals null. So basically what we're doing is we're calling the uh, index of our array at x and y okay and that don't be confused by the 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 names of the variables that I'm using here x and y they could have been i and j they could have been uh, l and m or whatever you wanted your variables to be called that's what they could have been these are just names of variables okay so what we're really doing is we're calling indexes in an array. So x represents an index in that array. So if the index of the array that we wanted to get at was 0, 0, then we would you know, store 0 in x, 0 in y, and we would use those variables to call that index. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So what we're saying here is we're saying generate a random number between 0 and 9 for x, and generate a random number between 0 and 9 for y. So let's just say that we generated a random number for x and that number is 5. And then we generated a random number for y and that number is 8. So then what we do is we say, hey, at position 5, comma 8, right, the 8th column in the 5th row, is that, does that equal null? Is there anything in that position in the array? If there's, if there is, all right, if there's not, basically we're checking to see if it's null. If there's not, then we want to put something there. So for now, let's create a new empty game object. Okay, so let's let's do this. We'll, we'll do game object. Uh, we'll just call it empty equals instantiate or we'll just do let's just do this. We don't even have to use instantiate. We can just do game object new or we'll just do new game object. Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. Game object. Game object. There we go. So at this point we don't uh, we don't have anything to graphically uh, uh, or visually kind of show where our minds are, but right now we've created this empty game object that we want to assign to that location in the array. So we'll just say grid x y equals empty. Okay. And then, just for debugging purposes, we're going to just debug out uh, to the log, to the console. We're going to basically output that location. So we're going to say x um, and y. So basically, uh, if you look at this, uh, this is just a whole bunch of concatenating happening here. So this is like, a, this is just a string, a character string. And then we concatenate the x value to that. Then we concatenate a comma and concatenate the y value and then concatenate a closing parentheses. So that's just going to show us where that mine was placed. So then otherwise, if it doesn't equal null, What we want to do is we want to say, hey, uh, so we can't put a mine here because there's already a mine here. So we're just going to call place mines again. So this will literally just keep calling itself until it finds a location that hasn't been used yet. So now how do we place these mines? 
we have to actually call that method, right? We have to start it. So what we do is we say for int, oops, i equals zero, i is less than 10, and then we increment i. For every time we iterate, we want to place a mine. So this basically will place 10 mines, starting at zero for the first mine, all the way to nine for the last nine, or for the last mine, because we check until i equal is less than 10. So it doesn't get to run one more time. So this way we get 10 mines placed uh, using this code here, and we should see our output in the log. Right? So just remember, we haven't done anything in Unity yet. We've All we've done is wrote this one script. We will have to attach this script to an empty game object in Unity because just the script by itself right here isn't going to be instantiated because it's not on a game object that lives in the scene. And we can't just drag this into the scene because it needs to live on an object. So we'll just go in this uh, game scene here and we're going to right click and click create empty. And we're just going to rename this to game. And then we're going to just drag the game script onto the game game object in the inspector. And you'll see that that object is, or the script is attached to that. So now when we run this, you should see the output in the console of all the locations that mines are going to be placed. So we press play. We've got all of these game objects here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it generated ten game objects. They're all mines. If we go to the console, move that up a little. These are all the locations, right? So row zero, column seven, row five, column five, row seven, column one, seven, eight, eight, three, 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 six, two. Is that yeah, six two, three seven, six three, two three. Nice, right? So that's that's the beginning of this game. That's how we get this game started. That's how uh yeah, that's how things will get started. Uh we're gonna at the next video, what we're gonna do is uh I've created a whole bunch of graphics that uh we're gonna go ahead and pull into Unity. And um with the next video, then we're going to utilize these. We're going to create prefabs, and then we're going to actually generate a grid and load up all of the other pieces of the grids, of the tiles, and then get an entire board kind of created. And then once we have that, we can start working on the rest of the logic to actually make the game function. And there's a lot. Uh, not too much, but a lot. There's probably going to be maybe... Uh, in my mind, I see like a 10 part series to get this whole thing done. Uh, so I know 10 weeks sounds like a, like a long time, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this short, somewhat long, but not too bad tutorial of how to generate a random location for a mine. This can definitely be applied to all their kinds of, uh, you know, programming, any kind of other game that you're working on. So, you know, if nothing else, I know this doesn't feel like much right now, but know that you've learned how to generate 10 random locations. <laughs> That's it. So until next time, uh, hopefully next week is what I'm working toward. I have a little more time now with all this, you know, coronavirus stuff happening. Uh, hope everyone here stays safe and, uh, you know, keep watching. So I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe to all your friends. Give me a thumbs up. Comment if you like this, uh, yeah, or give me a thumbs up, whatever. 